I decree 2015, every captivity of your life is turned already. For somebody, your relationship captivity has turned. The issue of your marriage has already turned. The issue of your family has already turned. I decree the God of Graceland has told me to declare to you this new year the grace of God will accompany you. The grace of God will follow you. You will experience heaven on earth. In your finances, you will experience heaven on earth. In your going out, you will experience heaven on earth. A thousand shall fall. Ten thousand shall fall. It will not be your portion.
Lekete suse li kata labra te la oko toso li akata la ba. La kwatu asua li akata li aba oko toso li akata la ba. La kota suse lekete ose li ababa ma kwatu ali akata. Ose li kata labra de la oko toso li ababa. Ma keta ose li akata la ba. Ekete suse li kata bro. La so keti sa kata labra ta lekete. Ose li akata labra ta lekete suse li kata la ba. Ekete suse li kata la ba okoto li kata la ba yaba yaba. Okoto se li akata la brata li kese le kete suse. Ekete suse le kita la brata la kata seze. I kata broto lo koto se lo koto suse li kata la. Le kete suse li kata la brata la okoto so li kata yaba. In Jesus precious name. Father we say thank you. King of glory we say thank you. Asian of this we say thank you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for this platform you have created. Thank you, O oh Lord, for those who have connected themselves to the platform. Thank you for those watching. Thank you for those that will watch here after. Thank you for the faithful friends, the family, the followers, the overcomers who have paid attention to your word on this platform. Let your name alone be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Good morning, Facebook friends. Good morning, Facebook family. Good morning, followers. Good morning, overcomers. Good morning, morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is God, Simon Sime El Dumba from the Liberty Christian Center, Republic of Liberia, West Africa. I am privileged of God this day to be counted among the living. And I know you are privileged of God this day to be counted among the living because it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassion faileth not the I knew every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So we must bless the Lord at all times. His praise must continuously <coughs> be in our mouths. Christian friends, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. We are thanking God for the restrictions that have been lifted on nations of the earth and most Nations of the earth are lifting the restrictions. We want to appreciate God for leaders in different nations of the world who have seen it or did it necessary to allow people to reassemble in churches. May the Lord bless them. May the Lord help them. May the Lord keep them. May the Lord continue to answer prayer. And may he keep us safe in Jesus' precious name. Well, this evening, as our manner of life is, we try to do little exhortation from God's word and we do some prayers. This is the time of liberty. This is the time of setting the captives free. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to set the captives free. And we are in crisis. There's no doubt about it. We are in a global crisis. We are in a, a public health crisis. We are in a humanitarian crisis. We are also in financial crisis because these things are intertwined. Whatever troubles the economy of a nation will trouble the health of the people. Whatever trouble the health of the, the health of the people will trouble the economy of the nation. It will trouble the livelihood of the people. And whatever trouble the livelihood of the people will trouble the way they relate to their God and so on and so forth. So what do we do in crisis time? We started a series few days ago looking at wisdom in crisis time. And we started last night or this morning by looking at the, the character in the Bible called Job. And Job was a man who experienced crisis. The Bible says he was a righteous man. He was a blameless man. He was a servant of God and he feared God and so on and so forth. But the Bible says Job went through the kind of trials and temptation that was worse than hell. You know, sometimes when we go through issues in life, we say we are catching hell. But Job is one person written in scripture and known in history to have gone through the greatest of hell. He went to hell and came back. He went through the, the, the greatest of troubles. He lost all of his possessions. He lost all of his inheritance. He lost all of his children. He lost everything, but he didn't lose his integrity. You won't lose your integrity in crisis in the name of Jesus. But the Bible is, is a book of knowledge. And the Bible makes us to understand that when we reject knowledge, we have rejected God. Hosea 4 says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So we ought to study to show ourselves a proof unto God. For the workman needed not to be ashamed or rightly divided the word of truth. My Bible tells me also that there is nothing we go through today that is not common. 
Everything you go through today has happened before. There is nothing new under the heavens. Even the global crisis we are going through, called the health crisis or the, 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 the lockdown of, uh, as an effect of, 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 of a health crisis and the economic shaking and uh, so on and so forth, is not new. It has happened before. Everything happening today has happened before. But if we read the scriptures, we will understand the future from the scriptures because every time you open the scriptures, a new picture is being painted and the pictures you paint from scripture will determine how you live in your future. So Christian friends, what we see today has been written before, has been prophesied before. It has happened in the lives of others before. Job had the worst of trouble. He had the worst of crisis. He had financial crisis. He had marital crisis. He had a health crisis. But the Bible says in all, he didn't lose his integrity. But Job was tempted at many points in time to complain against God. Job was, was offended many times. Job blamed himself many times. Job compared his righteousness with the righteousness of others. He had friends and the Bible says his friends came to move with him in his sickness. And they looked at him for seven days. And they never said a word. And after seven days, they enter into a dialogue. Many chapters in the book of Job were written during this dialogue between Job and his friends. But tonight, we want to go deeper in our exhortation by looking at Job chapter 22 and from verse number 21. Job 22 and verse number 21. Scripture says, Now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the instructions from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up, and you will remove iniquity far from your tent, and you will lay up gold as dust, and a gold of up as the stones of the bruise. Yes, you shall have, the Almighty shall be your defense, and you shall have plenty of savor. For then, you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. And you will make your prayers to him and he will hear you. And you will pay your vows and he will also declare things. You will also declare things and it shall be established unto you. So your light shall shine on your ways. And when they are casted down, you shall be exalted. And then... He will save the humble person. Christian friends, Job was in dialogue with his friends and his friends tried to point him out that, Job, you must have missed it somewhere. You need to return to the Almighty. God who bless you from the initial stage will surely bless you again, but you need to reconnect. You need to reconnect. You need to get back to God. You need to get back to God and remove iniquity fire from your tabernacle. Your iniquities or your sins may be the reason why you are where you are. Job, you need to repent. Job, you need to repent from your self-righteousness, and so on and so forth. But my Bible says that Job, latter days were better than his beginning. Everything he lost was were, were all restored to him because Job understood that God is the God of times and seasons. God is the God of times and seasons. He changed the times and the seasons of our lives. In Job chapter 14 and verse 7, Job said, With him, If a man die, will he live again? All the day of my appointed time, I will wait until my change come. There is hope for a tree. There is hope for a tree if it be cut down. Christian friends, I don't know if COVID-19 had cut you down in any way, but there is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. There is hope for a tree if it be cut down through the scent of water, it will sprout again. I can assure you, you will sprout again. If you can just return to the Almighty, no matter what you're going through now, no matter what you have lost, there is hope for you. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. No matter if you have been reduced to the, the, the lifestyle of a dog, you have left, you were a lion before, but the crisis has reduced you to the lifestyle of a dog. I want to assure you, if you can return to the Almighty, He will restore you to your previous state. He will restore you to your previous state in the name of Jesus. Job also made us to understand that if 
You fear things you have no business fearing. You will attract them into your life. In Job chapter 3 and verse 25, he said, The thing that I greatly fear is come upon me. Job was afraid that his children will sin against God. He was afraid that one day God will punish him for, for sinful behavior. Job started, ran after his children to make sure they were sanctified. He made sacrifices on a daily basis for his children, but he, was, he did it in fear and not in faith. Christian friends, he did it in fear and not in faith. When you serve God out of fear and not of faith, then you are telling God that you don't trust him. So the Bible makes us understand that Job wrote in Job 3.25, the thing I greatly fear is coming upon. If you fear economic hardship, you are inviting it. If you fear divorce, you are inviting it. If you fear torture and torment, you are inviting it. If you fear that the enemy that has started a, an evil work against you will succeed against you, you will definitely become a prey to the evil one because you have attracted it. What you fear, you will attract. He said, the thing I bring the fear is coming upon me. I decree and declare this morning, you will not fear evil in the name of Jesus. You will not expect evil in the name of Jesus. So what are the keys we can take home this morning before we begin to pray from Job's life? Number one, Job needed to return to God. Returning to God is key one. Return to God. Christian friends, globally we have things happening around us we have no question, no answers for. We are all faced with a situation that we never saw in our own lifetime. We are all faced with a global pandemic that has troubled every facet of our human existence. But all we need to do is to return to God. That's the conclusion of the whole matter. Return to the fear of God. Return to the fear of God. It doesn't matter how high you are now or how low you may be. It doesn't matter how deep you, you are in the problems of life. You must return to God. There is no option when it comes to returning. Because it's in returning and rest that you will have peace. It is when you return, you will have rest unto God. Also, number two key to now, you need to remove iniquity. Iniquity. There's a lot of difference between iniquity and sin. We will not go into that tonight. But you have to remove iniquities, perverseness. Remove iniquity far from your tent. Take away sin. Take away iniquity. Take away anything that you know will offend God. This is why Jesus came and he died on the cross of Calvary. So you and I will have access into the holiest of holy. We have access to God. And through the shared blood of Jesus Christ, you have access to freedom. Freedom from sin. Sin has no dominion over you. Christ has redeemed you and I from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. Well, it is written, curses everyone that hang upon the tree. That the blessings of Abraham may come unto the Gentiles. Christian friends, we need to remove iniquity far from our tabernacle. Number three, we need to repent from our self-righteousness. Job, most point in time, felt that he was too righteous, he was too blameless. So for, for no reason, he felt he was, he was suffering for the wrong reasons. And he argued with his friends, he argued with people around him, he argued with God. But the Bible makes us to understand that self-righteousness is like filthy rag. If you consider yourself to be self-righteous, you are proud. If you think you are better than others, you are proud. If you think you know God more than others, you are proud. My Bible says the people that do know that God shall be strong and they will do exploit. But your strength is in your humility and it's not in your pride. Christian friends, we need to be humble. Humble ourselves. Don't be too proud. God will always save the humble person. God will save the humble person provided we bring ourselves down. Humble yourself under the mighty hands of God and he will exalt you in due time. Your self-righteousness is nothing. You can't earn your place with God in eternity. Jesus Christ is the ultimate one who paid the ultimate price. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for your eternity. Your eternity is not what you deserve. It's not your right. It's not your privilege. It is just a gift from God. The gift of God is eternal life. So, be conscious of this one fact that there's no amount of good you and I can do that will make us righteous. It is what God has done for us by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die, to create the way for you and I to have a place in eternity. So don't see your self-righteousness. I'm not saying it's wrong to live right, but I would say he that doeth righteousness is righteous. But of all, of all you can do, we still need the grace of God. If you could do it on your own, there will be no need for God to send Jesus Christ for you. So stop considering yourself as the most holy. 
Stop considering yourself as the most sanctified. Stop looking at yourself as the most blameless. You are pure and you are holy and you are righteous and you begin to condemn others. The Bible says we should not condemn because we are not judges. When you start judging others, then you are playing God. Stop playing God. You are not God. Those who wake up and call themselves uh, rich people and they wake up, they want to destroy him or kind, they want to depopulate us because they feel they have the means. They are not God. It's God that kill it and make it alive. No human being has the right or the power or the audacity to kill and make it alive. Only Jehovah can kill and make it alive. So Christian friends, let your self-righteousness be laid aside and take on the armor of Jesus' own righteousness. Also, we need to repay our vows. Most of the time when we are in crisis, we make vows to God. Job said in the passage that we read, Job 22, 21, he said, you should return to the Almighty and you should pay your vows. When you pay your vows, never utter a word before God that you know you will not do. Never make a promise to God or to the people of God that you know you will not keep. Never say something in your heart and say another thing with your mouth. Let your ear be ear, let your, your, your nay be nay. That's why in the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes the Bible says every time we come to the church of God, we should be slow to say things with our mouth, but we should be quick and quiet in the presence of God. We shouldn't be the kind of people that are quick to utter things that we know we cannot do. Anytime you say a thing that you know you will not do or you have not done or you will not do, then the Bible says you are committing sin before God. So pay your vows to God. Most of the time we make vows to God that we don't keep. And the Bible says in crisis, that is how to get out of crisis. Make a vow to God and make sure you pay the vow before or after you get into crisis. Then the Bible says God will cause you to pray unto him. And when you pray, he will answer you. When you decree a thing, it shall be established. And lastly, God will restore. Restoration doesn't come without your own participation. Restoration doesn't come without your repentance. Restoration doesn't come without your repayment. Restoration doesn't come without your removal of iniquity from before you. Restoration does not come and will not come if you don't repent from your self-righteousness. So Christian friends, this morning, I want to pray. I want to pray that God's grace will be multiplied in your own life. God's peace will be multiplied in your own life. There's the blessings of God will be multiplied in your own life. Even in the midst of crisis, he will deliver you from six trouble, also from seven trouble. Job said, man is born, and after a few days, he already full of trouble. He already full of trouble. Trouble has covered him everywhere. So trouble is common. It's not new. It's common. But in the midst of trouble, God will make a way of escape. I say, my God will make a way of escape. So no matter the troubles of your life, in the troubles of my life, there is a God who has already created a way through the sharing of the blood of his son Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And if you can repent tonight, the future is going to be brighter for you. Your eternity is going to be sure. In Jesus' precious name. So this morning, I want to pray for you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we say thank you for the privilege to assemble once again. We say thank you for this great platform you have used, oh Lord, to enlighten multitudes out there. We thank you for your word that has gone forth. It has gone on fetter soil. It's not returning void. Your word is returning to you with, with testimonies and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. We say we should get acquainted. We should return. This day we return. We repent of our self righteousness, O oh Lord. We repent of ourselves, our self holiness. We return, O oh Lord, of looking on ourselves and not looking unto you. Lord Jesus forgave us our sins. O oh, King of glory, forgive us all our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. O oh Thank you for not leading us into temptation. Thank you for leading us out of darkness into your marvelous life. For Father in heaven this day, we commit our lives into your hands. Even in the midst of crisis, Lord, we return unto you and pay our vows. We return unto you and make ourselves your servants. We return unto you, O Lord, and what we are, we commit into your hands. In the name of Jesus. Father, we become more eternity conscious than earthly conscious. In the name of Jesus. We set our affection on things above and not things 
things below and not things abroad in the name of Jesus. Lord, we do not look left, we do not look right, but we look up to you, oh Lord. We look up to you because we are down and we need to get up. Our eyes are fixed on you, oh Lord. They will not know what to do in the midst of crisis, but our eyes are on you. Oh King of glory, we ask for your help this day. We ask for your help for the leaders of our nation, the leaders of our communities, the leaders of our family. We ask for your help this day. We ask for your healing power to flow in the nation. Lord, we ask for a revival. We ask for a revival. We ask for a revival. A revival of an epic proportion in the name of Jesus. Let your wind blow. Let that kingdom come. Let that kingdom come. Let that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let that kingdom come. Oh Lord, even as we assemble in your house in the, of worship, in your place of worship, in the appointed place, Lord, let the fire of revival come. Let the wind of revival come, oh Lord, that we will repent and, and, and return unto you in righteousness in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the spirit of pride will leave us alone in the name of Jesus. We raise a standard against that spirit of pride and self-righteousness in the name of Jesus. Father, we take authority against the spirit of condemnation. You say there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Lord, we walk after spiritual things and not fleshly things in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for your light to dawn on this dark continent of Africa, on this dark continent of Africa. Father, you say when we return unto you, we lay up gold as dust. Lord, we have the gold, we have the diamond, we have the resources, but it's not profiting us. It's not benefiting us because of sin, because of sin and sinful lifestyle, because of iniquity and perverseness, because of idolatry. Lord God Almighty, we plead for your mercy. We repent because of abortion and human sacrifices. Lord, the enemy has prevailed in the land, but we decree and declare every human sacrifice, every idol worship, we declare them not and void in the name of Jesus. Every form of gathering against the gathering of God, we scatter them in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of darkness will not prevail against the kingdom of light in the name of Jesus. Lord, for those watching this morning, that the enemy has used offense to keep them away from you. We pray for your mercy this morning. We pray this morning those that are watching, those that are following, that have vowed they will not return to the church of Jesus Christ until they see that there are no more sin in the church. Lord, we plead for your mercy. We plead for your mercy. Let them return to you. Let them return to you. Father, for those who have been hurt by church people, one way or another they've been, they've been torn in pieces by church people, by holy brethren or unholy brethren, we plead for your mercy. We pray Oh Lord, let there be a massive revival. As we return to the church, we decree and declare the redeem of the Lord shall return. We shall return. We must return. And there shall be everlasting joy. The everlasting joy in the presence of Father, we ask for your help this day. We ask for your help this day. Lord God Almighty, let there be total restoration. Restore our peace. Restore our, pro our, our process. Restore our, our, our inheritance in the name of Jesus. Of all we have lost in time past, or all we have lost in COVID-19, let there be total restoration. Total restoration. Total restoration in the name of Jesus. Lord, for all that are following on this platform, we ask, oh Lord, you do your strange work, and you bring to pass your strange acts. You do do your strange work and bring to pass your strange act. Lord, we ask for the turning of our captivity. We ask for the turning of our captivity in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray let something good come out of COVID-19. Let a revival break out of COVID-19. Let there be a return to solid Christian worship out of COVID-19. Father, we pray every form of demonic sacrifice that has been made this day to an evil on an evil altar to another God. Lord, we disallow it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We take authority of the atmosphere. We take authority of the heavenlies. We take authority of the air, the land, the sea. We decree and declare enough is enough. Darkness will not prevail where there is light in the name of Jesus. Let the light of the gospel begin to shine. From Cape Mount to Cape Amos, let the light shine. From Manima to Mount Barclay, let the light shine. From Manima to Mama Point, let the, let the light shine. From Mawolo Gizi down to, to Ravasport, let the light shine. Oh Lord, we pray from Putu Mountain all the way down to River says, let the light shine. Let the light of the gospel shine. Father, we pray against the spirit of dependence 
blessing. Lord, we depend only on you and not on ourselves. We depend on you and not on ourselves. Lord, we pray that you bless the works of our hands. Bless the work of our hands. Give Liberians their work culture. Give your children their work culture. Lord, we will return, O oh Lord, to the soil. Return to the field and make things to happen for our family in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit our young people into your hands. The upcoming generation, let the light of the gospel shine on them. Lord, let them have a hunger that cannot be quenched by any other fire or any other water but the water of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, give them, O oh Lord, hunger for you. Let them have enough hunger for you. Let them hunger and test after righteousness and let them be filled. Lord, you said our young people will dream dreams. Our old men will dream dreams. Our young men will see vision. Give them vision of the future. Give them vision of hellfire. Give them vision of heavy and hell. Give them vision, O oh Lord, that will make them to follow you. Give them vision of what the future holds for them. Lord, we pray for our young people on drugs and alcohol. We pray for the Zogos. We pray for those that are out there that have become outcasts in society. Those that have become outcasts in society. We pray for their deliverance. We pray, O oh Lord, for their salvation. For those in prison this day, Lord, let them encounter you in prison. Let them encounter you like Saul encounter you on the road to Damascus in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray this day for our sons and daughters who do not know you. We pray for our relatives who do not know know you, who are serving other gods, who are serving themselves. Father, we pray for total salvation, total healing in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. You said if we can believe, we and our household will be saved. I pray for my household to be saved. I pray for my siblings to be saved. I pray for my, my nieces and nephews to be saved. I pray for my, my children to be saved. I pray, oh Lord, that all you have given unto me, we are for sign and for wonder. Let there be a turn around. Let there be total turn around. Let there be total turn around in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, let there be help available this day for all who seek help. Let there be answer prayers. For those watching this morning, anyone watching that they say, Lord, let there be instant healing. Let there be instant healing. Let there be turning of captivity in the name of Jesus. Mental captivity is stern. Financial captivity is stern. Financial captivity is stern. Mental captivity is stern. Spiritual captivity is stern in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare the evil dreams must cease now. The evil dream must cease now. You will not be afraid of the terror by night. You will not be afraid of the arrow that fly by day. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray every gang up against our assembly this day. Every gang up against those on the highways and the byways returning to your heart. Lord, we raise a standard this day in the name of Jesus. COVID-19, we send you packing. COVID-19, we send you packing. COVID-19, we send you packing in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, let there be restoration to air travel. Let there be restoration to, to land travel. Let there be restoration to sea travel. Let there be restoration of all things in our own time in the name of Jesus. Let COVID-19 become a forgotten issue in the name of Jesus. The voice of the virus will not be stronger than the voice of God. Let the voice of God swallow up the voice of the virus in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we pray. We pray. That visions and revelation will be given to your children. Oh, Father in heaven, we pray. As many that have assembled this day, as many that are connected this day to this broadcast, we ask, O oh Lord, for your intervention. We ask for a turnaround. We ask, O oh Lord, as the day breaks, let there be breakthroughs. As the day breaks, let there be breakthroughs. Touch your sons and daughters. Grant us answers this day. For the confidence we have is that we will ask according to your will. Let that will be done. Let that will be done. O Steki Talabra, Lakota Zuzelika. Talabrata, Okoto Prika Talaka Talikiti, Usa Gadayada, Ragadayada, in Jesus' precious name. Father, we commit our leaders, national leaders, spiritual leaders, political leaders into your hands. We pray, O oh Lord, that righteousness will exalt this nation. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, they will come to the realization of the truth of the gospel. Lord God Almighty, they will follow up their prophecy for this time and for this season. The enemy will not use them against their church. The enemy will not use them. Lord, you Use these men in authority, the women in authority for your own glory. Use them for your own glory for such a time as this. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you and God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and share this video. Like and share this video. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Everything we do on Facebook is also on YouTube. And please tell somebody that Jesus is Lord. And for overcomers at home in Monrovia, please remember the marching order. For those of us who can transport ourselves, 
down to the tabernacle of testimony, no matter the part of the city you are, whether in Broadway, in Tinkoff Village, in Central Monrovia, please do the best you can in order not to, to, in order not to over congest our local assemblies. We have all the space at the base, at the headquarters. We follow the government regulations of washing hands and keeping social distancing. Remember, social distancing may be good, but spiritual distancing is evil. Spiritual distancing is risky. Don't distance yourself spiritually. In Hebrews 10 25 says, We should not forsake the assembling together of the brethren. And thanks be to God, the governments of the world have listened to the cry of the church. They have allowed us to assemble. But please do the best you can. Here at Johnsonville, at the headquarters, we have all the space available. All roads lead to Johnsonville. Please transport yourself. We are still recovering from COVID-19. We are not making the usual transportation available, but do the best you can. And if you can come, find one of our local assemblies where, right where you are and worship in those locations. But most of all, come to Johnsonville. Come and Jesus is Lord. Remember, we are taking communion today. And next Sunday will be, or today is a worship and wonder Sunday. And next Sunday will be another um, anointing service. And God bless you as you come. Remember, we are sticking to time. It's 8.30 to 10 a.m. 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. local time. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen.